Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to this week 10's lectures on uh, the course on linear systems theory. Uh, so this week we will focus a bit on uh, output feedback of the system. So, so, so far uh, in our design methods of pole placement we saw uh, uh, a controller designed via the standard state feedback such that the closed loop system is either stable or it has poles at some desired uh, pre predefined desired locations. Uh, usually the state may or may not be available for, for measurement. In that case we may, so what is available for measurement are the outputs. So in this lecture we will focus on how to design controllers, well not the design will come up a little later but what is the analysis part of it or uh, what are the, the, the little, little concepts that we need to build on before we go to the design process when we have outputs uh, for measurement. Okay, so this is uh, uh, to do with uh, the concept called uh, state estimation. Okay, so why do we need uh, this uh, state estimation? So we start as usual with uh, the LTI system, x dot is ax plus bu. Uh, similarly, you can also do it for the uh, the discrete time version, so nothing really uh, changes. So the standard uh, control problem which we saw until now was to design a state feedback controller of the form u equal to minus kx such that uh, a minus bk is either a stability matrix or also has eigenvalues at some desired locations. Uh, so eigenvalues of a minus bk could be at some predetermined location mu until till uh, mu n, right? And then we we saw a, a bunch of methods of how to how to construct uh, the K matrix. Uh, this was typically called called pole placement. We started of uh, techniques using just compare the coefficients of the characteristic equation or look at uh, the controllable canonical form or even towards the end we had derived something called the Ackermann's formula. Okay, so that's that was that was good until you could measure the x, right? So, so what is crucial here is measuring this x. Uh, but in most cases, only the output is available for measurement. So, when the output is available for measurement, the control law u equal to minus kx cannot be directly uh, implemented on the system, right? Because I really do not have access to all of the x's of the system. However, we know something called observable systems and also detectable systems. So what we will look at in this lecture is to just to relate these two concepts and see can I design some control law that would still stabilize my system or have my closed loop poles at uh, mu 1 till, uh, till, till mu n. Okay. So what was about, about uh, state estimation? What is about let us begin with what was about uh, observable or, or detectable. So if the pair AC is detectable or observable, it should be possible to estimate the state x from the system's output uh, up to an error that vanishes as t uh, goes to infinity. So this was uh, the definition, right? So in observability, I was interested in measuring x t naught from the future inputs and outputs where, uh, where you know, uh, the interval was given from t0 to, to, to t1. So I was measuring uh, x, x t0, right? So that was my definition of, of observability and similarly with, with the constructability. Okay, so what was, uh, what was happening here is if you look at x t0, I was only measuring the value of a state at a particular instant of time. Whereas the implementation u equal to kx, one needs a continuous estimation of all the states. Right? So, just measuring x at t naught or the initial time does not really solve my purpose, but what I want is a continuous feedback of states, u equal to kt. So, this if I write it in terms of time, this should be something like this, minus k x t, right? maybe for all t uh, if, I, if my initial time is, is, is 0. Right. Okay. So, what do I do to, to get an estimate of this or to get uh, an estimate how the states uh, looks, look like? So, we start with what is called an open loop uh, state, state estimator and to construct this state estimator, I start with what I call as the copy of the original system with some new states, let me call this x bar. Right? So let us, uh, so uh, uh, typically in, in uh, what I would like uh, to, to do is uh, to feed back this u equal to x 
sorry k times x bar instead of instead of x equal to you know instead of u equal to uh, minus k x okay because this is not really available for measurement but i but i i, I can kind of construct a copy of the system with new states x x hat or or states uh, or or the copy uh, or or uh, the system which is a copy of the original system has states x x hat in such a way that now i, I can define the error between the what I call as the estimated state and the actual state. And what I really want is that the error should be equal to 0, that the estimated states which is being fed back is equal to the actual states that the system needs, right. So, if I just look at the error dynamics, uh, it is easy to derive that E dot is uh, x cap x hat dot minus x dot that will be uh, simply A of x cap minus a of uh, of x. So, this will simply be a this x hat minus x that will be a times c and the b's will just, just cancel out right. So, I have a system which now looks like this right. So, e dot equal to a e. Now, I want e to go to 0. So, when when is this possible? When does the error uh, go to 0? Well, it is obvious of so far what we have learned is that if a is a stability matrix, then the open loop state estimator results in an error that converges exponentially fast to 0 for, for every u, right. So, there is no, nothing really depending on u here, right. So, uh, I can, uh, I start with a copy of the system and I see that as long as my system is stable, it results in an error that converges to 0. When, uh, when error converges to 0, I know that this estimate of the state converges actually to the to the original state and this is what what I want for for feedback right okay so problems arise when a is not a stability matrix okay so what if a is not a stability matrix then let's construct a, what we now call as a closed loop estimator which looks uh, like this so x hat dot is a x hat plus b u minus this little little uh, term here right minus l y cap minus y or y hat minus y or y is, uh, so this will also be a, a hat here, y hat is c x hat plus d u. Okay, the error is again of the form what was here and that was x hat minus x. Okay, and if I just rewrite the dynamics of E dot in terms of this new x dot and of course, x evolves as a x plus b times u. Now, what I have is uh, the error dynamics now as a function of A, well this is known to me, C is known to me and some matrix L which we can design by ourselves. So this is this is like, like uh, a design parameter or a design matrix. So, if the L, sorry, if my A matrix is not stable, I can always choose a matrix L which makes a minus L C a stability matrix right. If A minus L C is a stability matrix then again E will converge to 0 and therefore, X hat will converge to X ok. So, so to summarize if the output injection matrix ga uh, gain L, so I call this the output output uh, injection matrix, right? So this is this is available for design that makes A minus L C a stability matrix. Then the estimation error converges to zero exponentially fast for every input u, and therefore x hat converges to x. So two things we have seen to to design an estimator, like I need an estimate of the state when the open loop system is stable, then it is pretty pretty straightforward, right? To 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 design this. Whereas, when A is not stable, I need to do a little bit of modification to get an estimate to, to get, a, get a copy of the system which looks like this and the, the parameter L is free, uh, is, is, is a design parameter or, or a design matrix such that A minus L of C should be a stability matrix. Now, obvious questions will arise, uh, how do I choose uh, the L matrix, uh, can I always choose it or not and uh, based on what we learnt in controllability or stabilizability, the answer should should be slightly 
guessable right it's, you can guess what, what under what conditions a minus lc is uh, a stabilize is, is a stability matrix when i have l as a as a design parameter or, or i can choose or i can construct the uh, the matrix l uh, so we, we will see uh, what are these these uh, conditions so analogous to controllable and stabilizable systems we have a uh, couple of necessary and condition sufficient conditions for state uh, obser observation so first is when the pair ac is detectable or even observable you can write it if the pair ac is observable or detectable then it is always uh, possible to find a gain matrix l such that a minus lc is a is a stability uh, matrix okay so first let's try to understand this in terms of duality and then come back to our system to the original system so i have x dot is a times x b times u and say for simplicity y is cx and i, I kind of just ignore uh, the 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 d for the moment nothing really changes uh, just with a lot of loss of generality i can do this. and say i have now a dual system z dot is a transpose z plus c transpose uh, and say some okay let's call this some some input and say some eta is uh, b transpose z okay so what i want is that well that a minus lc should be a a stability matrix so here in this case i want to choose v of the form minus k sorry uh, let's call this such, l times z such that a minus l okay let's say a minus uh, c transpose of l is a stability matrix okay this is this l here right or in other words i can also place uh, or it also yields or it also places the poles of a transpose minus c transpose l at desired locations okay now when is this possible if i just look at so this turns out to be like a standard pole placement problem Uh, for 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 linear systems which we saw earlier so what was the necessary and sufficient condition for pole placement of x dot is ax plus bu with u equal to minus kx well that was at the a pair ab is uh, either controllable or the weaker version stabilizable okay now similarly look at this here so what i require for a pole assignment like this or even stabilization thing is that the pair a is controllable okay or if i so controllability of the dual system so this is uh, controllability of the dual system this is equal to observability of uh, the original system so this is my or original system this is i can call my dual system okay so uh, a necessary and sufficient condition would now turn for Uh, this uh, observer design is a times c is observable or at least detectable okay so that's what this uh, this results uh, will tell us when ac is detectable or observable it is always possible to find a gain matrix such that a minus lc is a is a stability matrix so these are both necessary and and sufficient conditions uh, further 
Now, what we saw here is in, in, in terms of not only that A minus, not only that this, this matrix is a stability matrix, it can also place poles at, at desired locations. So, under the assumption or if the pair AC is observable and given any set of n complex numbers lambda 1 till lambda n, there will always exist a state feedback matrix L such that A minus LC has eigenvalues at precisely these, uh, these locations. It is very similar to the pole placement problem that we saw while we were doing a, a control design. right? So, so, so uh, the, the duality is a little easier to check. Uh, we could still do with this, the standard observability definition and go on checking that these are actually necessary and sufficient conditions. But now we have the uh, very very nice tool in terms of duality. So we, we will we may rather exploit that tool than just going for a, for another rigorous proof uh, of these two conditions. Okay. So now how do I I design a stabilizing controller now through uh, through what I call as output feedback. Okay, so uh, let us start again with the LTI system, uh, x dot is A x plus B u, y equal to C x plus D u and let me assume that u equal to minus k x is a stabilizing uh, control law. Uh, similar things would also exist for discrete time system. So, uh, whatever I am doing here it can be directly translated to the discrete time systems with the appropriate uh, definitions of stability in terms of eigenvalues within the unit circle and so on. Okay, so let me let me construct this uh, this observer of this form x dot or x hat dot is a x plus b u minus l y hat minus y y hat is c x hat plus d u. So let this be a state uh, observer for which I can design in such a way that a minus l c is a stability matrix, which also means that I start with the assumption that a c is observable and that the pair a comma b is uh, controllable. Okay. So, uh, usually the state may not be available for measurement. right? So, when the state is not available for measurement, I may want to use u equal to minus k x hat, which is the estimated state instead of the actual state. Okay. Now, once I do this, uh, how, would, how would my uh, system look like? Okay, so, so loosely speaking what I am trying to do here is uh, x dot is A x plus B times u where I would want u to be some k times x, but I do not have a k x for measurement, but all I have for measurement is some output y and based on this can I construct an observer right, with this uh, x that x hat dot is a x hat and, and so on, which will give me an estimate of, of x hat and this x hat can be fed back as my as my input. Okay. Not, not, not a very uh, good block diagram, but something uh, okay to, to just visualize what is what is happening. I do not have x for measurement, but based on this y, I construct this x hat and then feed this back to the controller via this form. Okay. And now what, what do I know from, from previous slides is that, well, uh, if as long as a minus l c is a stability matrix, x hat uh, converges to x. Okay, now, what can I say about while I do these things, there is some, some loop that is happening and is, is a closed loop system stable. Right? So, let us quickly uh, verify that. Okay, so, uh, so, what do I have is uh, x dot is a x plus b u and say y is uh, c x plus d u and a stabilizing controller of the form u equal to minus k x and the observer or the, the state estimator looks something like this a x hat plus b u minus l y hat minus y and output looks something like this. Okay, so uh, if I uh, were to say I feed back u equal to minus k x hat, and let me check what happens to the uh, overall system here. Right? So I have I have two things here, right? One is the dynamics evolving in x, 
which should be such that you you such that the pair uh, a minus or or the matrix a minus b k should either be stable or should have eigen values at some locations mu 1 till mu n okay and moreover i have also have this observer dynamics in such a way that this matrix a minus l times c uh, is stable and also has uh, eigen values at say some lambda 1 till uh, lambda n right and now all of these dynamics together must uh, be stable okay so x hat dot is a x hat plus b u minus l okay what is y hat y hat is c x hat minus sorry plus d u minus y okay i can also write this uh, equivalently as x hat dot is equal to a minus lc okay now what is u right u is equal to kx hat so i can write this as b k x hat so i'll have a plus uh, so it's be a minus right u equal to minus k x hat so i'll have a minus b times k right and then what is y y is c x plus d u i plug this here and i will have another term plus l d k x hat okay so uh, I start with the dynamics of x hat, substitute for u as minus k x hat and, and I have now, now something like this, x, uh, uh, x hat dot is a minus l c minus b k plus l times d times k x hat plus, uh, so what will remain is this l, okay, I can just put this like this at l times y. So, in this u also I substitute u equal to minus k x hat. Okay, so, and let us just let this y be, be as it is. Okay, so, uh, so, once I do this I now want to look at how my uh, error dynamics looks like, right, e which was x hat minus x and I am also inter interested in how my original dynamics themselves uh, perform, right, which is x dot is a x plus b times u okay so the total states that i am interested now are x comma e okay i'll just do x transpose e transpose transpose right uh, so first okay what do i have now uh, about uh, e right so e dot is a minus lc e dot that's what we derived earlier okay moreover x dot is a a x plus uh, b u this is a x plus b u is minus k x hat so what is what is x hat in terms of e x hat is e plus x so i will have this a x plus b okay so i'll write this minus b k e uh, plus x so this is uh, x dot is a minus b k x plus a minus b k x and I will have a minus b k e. So, the overall system in terms of the states x and e will now look something like this, right. So, the state space model for the closed loop system takes uh, this form, okay. Now, uh, well, uh, I just want to look at the stability uh, of this, right. So, the closed loop system with output feedback controller results in a system whose eigenvalues are the union of eigenvalues of what do I do for the pole placement with the state feedback law and also 
uh, I am looking at the eigenvalues now of the state estimator with uh, a minus L c. Okay, so, this will be the total eigenvalues of, uh, of the closed loop system. right? So, and therefore, uh, the conclusion of stability will just be on where are my, uh, my eigenvalues of a minus b k and a minus uh, l c. Right? So, uh, the closed loop system is of course, stable because uh, we start with the assumption that a b is uh, controllable or at uh, stabilizable or an AC is observable or at worst, uh, at worst it is uh, detectable and therefore, the closed loop eigenvalues which are depending on the eigenvalues or, or, or the union of eigenvalues of A minus B k and A minus L c will form the eigenvalues of the total system and therefore, the closed loop is actually uh, stable. Right? So, the, the answer here is yes. Okay. So, one, one interesting thing also to look at is when I introduce an observer in the system. right? So, uh, uh, starting with the state feedback u equal to minus k x, I just have x dot equal to a minus b k and I can do a bunch of things from, st from st stabilizability to pole placement and so on. Now, if I put on top of it an observer, uh, does it really uh, uh, affect my original system? right? Does it also interfere in the, in the uh, uh, poles of my uh, original system of a minus b k? So, whatever I do with the observer should not really change my original uh, original design uh, procedure. right? So, let us see what, what happens uh, in, in that case. right? So, what is the effect of, of, of the addition of observer on the uh, closed loop system? Okay, so, we will just uh, try to derive a few things here. Okay, so, I have the closed loop dynamics in the state and the error in the following way. A minus B k B times k 0 and A minus L c times x times e. Now, okay, what are the poles of this system? Okay, so, I just do uh, S i minus this entire thing uh, of A minus B k minus B k 0 A minus L c x sorry S i minus A the determinant of this equal to 0 will give me the characteristic equation. Okay, so, mind you that x is, is in R n and the error is also in R n. So, the overall system will have uh, of have will be of dimension R uh, 2 times n. Okay? Okay. So, if I just solve for this, it is uh, easy to check that I am essentially solving for this thing S i. So, this will be uh, this identity will be i 2 n. Right? So, the identity of, of, uh, of 2 cross of, of uh, dimension 2, 2 times n. So, I okay. will so, have S i minus a plus b k s i minus a plus l c equal to 0. Okay. So, this will give me the solution to this will be will give me my uh, closed loop poles. Okay. So, what are the closed loop poles? Well, the, the first n poles will be the poles which come as a result of pole placement okay and these are the poles due to observer design okay and what you see is uh, that these two don't interfere with each other right so there is nothing here so whatever happens with the l the c the, the pole placement component remains the same and, and vice versa. Right? So, so, whenever I, uh, uh, I do uh, a simultaneous or, or, or uh, design an observer and a controller, 
the closed loop poles uh, of the system consists of the poles due to play, pole placement alone and poles due to observer system, observer design alone. So, no, nothing really changes right in, 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 in the design or the poles remain, poles due to pole placement remain unchanged by the poles due to observer design and, and, and vice versa. Okay. So, therefore, uh, we can design the controller matrix K and the, and the observer design matrix L independently. So, one would possibly think that oh, when I am actually, I, I design a controller uh, and I just okay, bring it to you and say hey design an observer for me. Uh, does that change in, uh, and have any change in my design procedure? No, I can actually design both of them separately, no, both need not be done uh, simultaneously. Right? So, I design a, a controller, I design an observer, plug them uh, separately right? and then everything works. So, not that uh, L will have some effect on K or K will have some effect on, on L. So, uh, nothing like that happens. Okay. So, so uh, to end with, uh, we will just look at okay, what is the transfer function now of the, uh, of the observer based uh, controller. Let us start with uh, D equal to 0 and I just derive uh, Okay, let us quickly uh, see if we can derive this. Okay, so, uh, the way we derive the transfer function is okay, look at this expression here together with u equal to minus k x hat okay, uh, or also mean that u of s is minus k x of s. From this expression, I can derive x of s. What will, what will x of s be? Uh, x of s here will be, well, you can uh, just take uh, uh, the, uh, the Laplace of this, I will have s x hat of s is this entire matrix. Uh, so, let me call this a star here uh, x hat plus L y of s. Okay? And then I just uh, plug in for u over here and then just get an expression for uh, relating y and u and it turns out that okay, this is a, a simple exercise uh, okay, maybe just for simplicity assume k equal to 0 that u of s over y of s is minus k uh, s i minus a plus l c plus b k inverse times l. Okay, a little interesting thing uh, just, just as, as a passing comment is that even though A minus B k and A minus L c are designed to be stable, this A minus L c minus B k need not uh, be uh, stable all the time. Okay, let us just say how, how uh, a typical block diagram might look like. So, let us say I have some reference signal let us say possibly 0 uh, and okay, I have uh, say uh, a y s here. So, this is essentially, so this entire thing will, will sit here. Uh, so, b k s i minus a plus l c plus b k inverse times l. Okay, maybe with a minus. Okay, and then uh, this will be u of s, and this u of s will go to my plant, which is of the form x dot is a x plus b u, and this will give me some measurement y of s and be fed back in this way. Okay, but even though okay, so even though this may this need not be uh, stable by itself, the overall closed loop system is 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 of course stable. That's what we saw over over here. Right? This actually is is a complete uh, stability matrix. Okay, so uh, okay, I'll just next time maybe do a little uh, a block diagram version of each of these components of what is measured, what is computed, what is fed back, and so on when we do the, the actual design. So, so far in this lecture, we, we saw about uh, state estimation. We also saw, saw uh, how to stabilize via output feedback. Okay, in, in the next lecture, we will do in addition to, to solving design problems which involve both designing the controller and the observer at the same time, we also look at what is called as a, as a minimum uh, order observer. So, that will come up uh, in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.